So we want to sort of talk about what this all means uh, for France as a shooting location for international productions. So today we have uh, two great speakers. Um, I have uh, Rachel Penfold, who um, is the founder and head of visual effects company One of Us, which is based in London. Um, but it's very interesting because you've just opened a new uh, office in Paris. Um, uh, one of us is behind, uh, has worked on uh, projects like Mirror Mirror. Uh, you did Matteo Garoni's Pinocchio. I think you won a Donatello for that. Um, right. right. <laughs> um, and uh, We Are What We Are, um, Anna Karenina, uh, Everest, The Revenant. You, you know, the, the list is endless of projects that you've worked on. And you're going to talk to us about why you've decided to move into France and, and, and you know, what drove that and, and what the benefits are of working there. Um, and then we have Raphael uh, Benoliel, who is like the go-to person for international productions in, in France, um, uh, from everything from Mission Impossible to Emily in Paris, um, you name a production, and you've probably been involved in it in some type of, in some shape or form. So I just wanted to kick off with you, um, uh, Raphael, because we talked around about the same time last year, when we did a talk about Emily in Paris, which you were very mm. heavily involved in, and it had just been a huge huge hit over 2020 during the pandemic when everybody was dreaming about going to Paris but they couldn't go to Paris. Um, so we did, a, we did a piece about that and, and it was very interesting because in fact as well as uh, shooting there, um, shooting like the, the location scenes, it did a lot of studio work. Um, I, I'm not sure if it did any post-production work but it was interesting in that it had done a lot of the work in France. Um, but you at that time had had a very very quiet year um, I think it was at the end of, you know, just this time last year. So you, you'd been sort of sitting on twiddling your fingers a bit and hadn't had too many projects because there hadn't been many international productions coming into France. What's happened over the last 12 months? Is, is it picking up again? Is it busy? Yeah, it's really busy. But first, I would like to say hi to everyone, <laughs> especially just a special hello to a dear friend of mine who's watching us at the moment, who's Roger Frappier in Canada, who just produced oh. the beautiful film, The Power of the Dog. So I just want to say hi to him and everyone else, of course. And thank you for joining us. Um, uh, last year, yeah, no, since we've talked, of course, uh, things have uh, been picking up a lot. And there's been a, a lot, a lot of shooting uh, French, of course, which never really stopped during the pandemic um, um, and international productions that finally came back. Not that they were not allowed to shoot or because even during the pandemic, we did some shoots, but uh, the Americans were maybe a bit like uh, afraid of traveling, which I can understand. So it was less, but um, since we've talked, I've worked of course, and we produced uh, Emily season two that you may have watched. Uh, and, and more recently we worked and together with Rachel, well, not directly, directly together because she's working on it now, uh, John Wick 4. Um, and the last David Fincher movie, uh, where the, a part of the shoot happened in France, especially the opening sequence of the film and slightly more. And, um, and also I produced a, a French film, which is completely different, but, uh, I like to have different sort of productions like production service as a, for these beautiful international projects that like to come to shoot in France and also producing my movies. And, um, and now I'm working on uh, another big production for Netflix, which is a murder mystery too, um, with Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston. And, uh, and of course, as you may have read, uh, prepping the new season of Emily, Emily in Paris season three and, and four after that. So no, no, it's, it's been very busy. I cannot complain at all. And I think uh, it was the same for me as, as well as uh, all my uh, colleagues or other productions that are welcoming international productions in France. And I mean, just an, an aside, did the fact that domestic production had started up so quickly, did that help the international productions come in because there were protocols set in place or did it not have such an impact? Yes, I, I think so because, uh, well, when we talked last year, um, a Danish film was shooting in France. So it's, uh, uh, I, I think that uh, people were reassured the fact that we were able to shoot in France. Uh, I cannot say that, uh, but still they were more like uh, possibly uh, afraid of coming or traveling for, for those reasons. But the um, um, fact that it, it picked up a lot, I, I don't know, maybe it's due to also maybe thanks to the pandemic because people stayed home for such a long time that they watched everything on all the networks and platforms and everything that 
they had to keep up now and to provide new content. So maybe that's also one of the reasons. I think it's the main reason. It's now that uh, every uh, uh, studio needs content. So they have to produce. And now, of course, they're calling us to, to do so, which is a great thing, actually. Thank you. So, so Rachel, um, coming to you, you're at the other end, you're at the post-production end, but that doesn't mean it starts at the end. I mean, obviously, you're having to plan for that from the very beginning of a project, if you can, if you can be involved at the very early stages. But I, I'm um, intrigued about the idea that you're based in London, where we already have a lot of studios coming through. There's already a lot of work. What was the thinking behind um, opening an office up in Paris? Um, I think well, it's it's always about talent. It's always about people. And it's always about talent. And and we've been, I mean, in our case specifically, um, our creative director in Paris, who's an artist that we've worked with for years, over ten years, he moved back to Paris. We'd always talked about well, we wanted to maintain our relationship with him, but we'd also talked about setting something up with him in in Paris. So that was he was a big big part of it, but there is so much talent in France. I mean, we've, we've been working and, and actually French talent has been, you know, coming out of France and moving all around the globe for decades, really for a lot. We've been working with French talent for, you know, really a long time. Um, and it is, and that for us, for my little bit of the industry, um, it's absolutely world-class talent. There are fantastic schools in France um, and uh, they produce fantastic artists. But there's also actually there's, you know, a lot of wonderful local fr French production. So it's a combination, I suppose, of the talent, the people, but also the creative opportunities that exist in France from filmmakers and, and producers. So there's a whole host of, of different reasons, really. Um, I think it's probably fair to say that Brexit was... <laughs> was a big part of it as well. Um, although we were talking about, we had been setting up, a, we had been talking about setting up a studio since like 2019 or, or, or um, way before that. Um, but but post-Brexit, um, we just feel that that is really not in tune with our, with our studio ethos at all. We've worked with European talent for, again, like say for decades, you know, half our, half our studio in London is probably European talent and then you know a great deal of that is French um, so uh, we want to remain European we want to have that cross pollination of artists and ideas and creativity and so on so that's a big part of things um, for us uh, you know that that yeah probably those two reasons I would say so um one of the things that people often say, well, people fear about France is that it will be very bureaucratic. Um, and also the labor laws are very different. Like if you hire somebody, there's a lot more sort of red tape around hiring somebody. Was this something you had to go through when you set up the office? How easy was it? I mean, we talked about this, but um, how easy was it worth it? It's not, yeah, it is. I mean, definitely. It's, of course, it's worth it. Um, you know, that yes, there is a lot of red tape, but there's an awful lot of people that are um, willing to help you. We've had a great deal of help from, from Film France and CNC. Um, uh, the, the, the difficulties are definitely outweighed by um, all of the benefits of being there, being able to tap into, um, you know, some fantastic films, TV series, and like I say, the talent that's that's exists in France and the rest of Europe, really. Yeah, it's not straightforward, but I think that in terms of setting up a company, that's, you know, that, that's just setting up a studio is complicated, whatever you do. But in terms of France as an international, you know, VFX or shooting location, no one should be worried about that sort of red tape because actually there's so much stuff in place to, to help people set up the production companies that they need in order to shoot in France. Or, and, and in fact, in, if you're just doing VFX, you don't, we can, we can help with all of that sort of stuff. We can help with um, getting through the cultural uh, test and, you know, working out where the spend is, you know, if it's split between London and, and Paris, all, all of those things are, are things that we can help with. Or Raphael, there's lots of companies out there that will help set up productions that want to work in France. 
So, um, so with your um, French office, are you going to be um, focused? I mean, I, for example, I, when you sort of press release this in the summer, it said that you were working on the new Asterix and Obelix film, which is obviously a domestic film. So did you end up working on that, that film? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's we're doing that at the moment. That's in fact that was probably our first official um, show out of the Paris office. So we, we've been working more casually between the two sites for for a while. But um, so yes, we're doing that at the moment. And then, as Raphael says, we've got John Wick Four that's just starting up um, at the moment. And then we have. Um, some well, we have two big uh, Netflix films that will um, be split between London and Paris as well. Can you say what those are? Are you allowed? Yes. To? <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of them is um, is the feature film um, for Luther Detective series that are very popular, and the other is um, is a a Millie Bobby Brown film. Um, called Damsel, where she co-stars with a female dragon. Right. Okay. And you so you were talking about like the cross pollinization of of like the French and the well, I guess this is going to become your European hub now. Um, but how's that going to work? You know, so what? The staff aren't going to be going physically backwards and forwards. How are these? Oh yeah, no, they. I mean, they absolutely can, but no, but okay. not you know, not daily. <laughs> There's no commute. Um, it's really about well, so so a lot of the infrastructure a lot of the a lot of the the, um, the the studio in Paris has has local infrastructure but it also leverages a lot of our London infrastructure so when we were investing and planning for London we were planning with Paris in mind so you know they're just using high um, bandwidth connections between the two sites that's completely seamless in fact we've got um, two sites in London that use a dedicated fiber link so they can be the artists can be doing whatever shots they're doing in in Paris, and they can be rendering them in in London. So all of that is really seamless technology. Um, and then what we you know it's really about working as one team, and that's the fantastic opportunity is that we have uh, a show that's split between London and Paris, but is it is just one team? It's one team doing the work. It's one team making creative decisions. It's one team talking amongst themselves about what needs to happen. So, um, yeah, and the time difference is is nothing really. So, it yeah, it works. It works incredibly well. And what language are they all communicating? The studio. The if you, if we had an official language, it would be English in the in the um, Paris studio. But of course, it's it's multilingual. Mm -hmm. But the yes, we have to if we if we're if you're talking to a di director in English, you know, we have to be able to communicate everything in English, all the sort of nuances of performance or, you know, artistry around a shot. So um, obviously there's a, this new VFX uh, bonus. Mm -hmm. And so how are you, I mean, in terms of your company doing this work, how are you splitting it? Are you, do you take the, do you get the, um, the trip um, rebate on the section of work that you do in France and then you you tap into um, UK rebates and, and, and incentives. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, in the case of John Wick, obviously they, so they, if they, they're spending in excess of um, 2 million euros on visual effects, um, but they can utilize, so they can, they can utilize that 40%, the additional 10% across all eligible spend. So that's their production spend and their post-production spend. Um, they're shooting there. The same with the project that I named that, that's the sort of French-American story. They will do the same thing. They'll, they'll utilize that. In the case of something like Luther or Damsel, so we will, they're shooting in the UK. Um, they will um, make use of the UK tax rebate and the French rebate. So they get the 30, well, it's more than 35% in the UK and we get to um, make use of the 40% in Paris. So it's, it's a fantastic offer. It's brilliant for filmmakers. So, so yes. Raphael, to bring you bring you in, I mean, mm -hmm. you've been, you've been um, working in international productions. I don't know, maybe you don't want me to say how long. I don't know, more than a decade, <laughs> more than 15 years. Yeah. And that, you're seeing a sea change. 20. 
20, yeah. exactly. I was being kind. 12, 11, <laughs> but yeah, it's fine. But, um, but so have you seen a real sea change in the last sort of like obviously a decade with a trip, but it's really like in the last two or three years, there seems to have been an even bigger step change in terms of France trying to become a, a, a big international yeah. location. Yeah, that's what that's for sure. Uh, well, the first change was when we created the, the tax rebate, of course, uh, that was in 2010. And, and then after every year where we were trying to um, make changes and make it more efficient, and of course, the, this brought many, many, many more predictions. And the last step that we did um, with the 10% upgrade with the VFX has, has, has changed that again. Uh, for instance, uh, we were talking uh, about John Wick, because that's a project um, we both working on. Um, uh, I, they're spending like uh, more than 2 million euro in VFX companies here, which of course gonna help them for for the physical productions where they're gonna benefit for 40% rebate. That's a huge change. And on the project that I'm working on now, uh, um, Mr. Murdo, not to, to name it, um, half of the physical shoot um, in France will happen on stage, which is something that would not have happened possibly a few years ago, because now they're coming for the locations, stages, and uh, part of the post-production, so all the entire post-production, depending on the project, but uh, on this one is the VFX. And that bonus is bringing a lot of uh, business for the industry, that's for sure. That, and that's that a huge be... change, yeah. So you really think the VFX, that, that 10%? Yes, that... because I, I do not think that they would have come to France without that 10% bonus, because as you may know, if we compare ourselves and, and well, we can do that, but that's possibly not what we want to talk now, but like people could complain about friends for many things, but there's many, many good things as well that we can name and go through. Um, talent, of course, is the first one, but um, like there's always things that we can improve without tax rebate. And one of the main thing that people would say, oh, in England, we have that, but not in France, is the, the fact that the above the line or part of the above the line is eligible in the UK and not in France. But now that we have 40%, it's, uh, I cannot say that, it, it, depending like on the series where the above the line is not that high, then it means that uh, the French rebate sometimes would be more beneficial and, and, and better for the production. Um, and as, uh, at the end, like if we want to compare that, for instance, for the New York tax rebate, like we were able to have the entire shoot of Emily in Paris in France, not because it's named Emily in Paris, but because our rebate was uh, more efficient than the, the uh, New York rebate. So with the 40%, it, it uh, put us on a, another scale and I'm showing like this is very efficient rebate. And if you compare that to the entire budget, uh, um, at the end, even without the above the line being eligible, uh, our rebate is possibly more efficient than others in other countries. And that's why we are now bringing stages, like uh, it would not have happened this way a few years ago. And I've worked on many other projects, uh, sorry. And I've worked on many other projects that uh, where we were, we were battling between France and UK, Germany or the US and, and other countries, of course. And, and this helps a lot, that's for sure. And that, that would change, apart from the fact that of course, uh, all the, uh, the platforms and the studios needs more and more content. So that helps a lot as well. I cannot uh, say the opposite, but um, the rebate is really essential. But I mean, one of the big questions for all territories, all key uh, shooting territories at the moment is the lack of crew and lack of mm -hmm. uh, studio space. I mean, does France have the capacity, did it all first before this, this squeeze, did it have the capacity and crew to bring in this new international these new international productions, and and do you think that the country can scale up to take on to take on lots lots more series and lots more fe um, uh, feature films? Uh, for for sure, it, it can. That's that's for sure. Uh, like if you were telling me now that you're going to bring a uh, hundred blockbuster shooting in France every year, that it would be maybe a problem. But uh, as we're going to scale up, as the, the industry is going up as well, I think it's completely doable, of course, and that's why. Uh, the, the government has uh, made this plan to, to be able to, to be one of the best uh, country, if not the best one in Europe, or, you know, I'm not going to say so because there's many very good countries, but, uh, but uh, yes, of course, at the moment, um, if, like, I, I cannot say that there's one project that wanted to come and shoot in France that were not able to do it because of the fact of the lack of the technicians or something. It's of course something that we are facing, but it's, it's a, if we can call that a problem, it's a positive problem that uh, all the 
all the countries in Europe are facing at the moment. The UK is really busy with, uh, with all the productions, the same in Germany, it's the same in France and everywhere. So we are facing that, but uh, I, I like this kind of problem. I will deal with these problems every day. You know, you're talking really about positive aspects of things like more work for everyone, that's great. You know, it's something that we need to face. It goes from, from uh, uh, schools to, and like you have to start uh, when it starts. Like uh, if you want to have more technicians, you need to form, like you have the proper, they need to be trained properly. And this is what uh, we are doing uh, on the shoot that schools are doing that it's the same uh, i'm sure with the post-production companies that are in direct link with the many very good schools in france uh for that aspect and um um yeah and with the technicians then come the fact of uh, the the equipment and the stages and everything it's just and, and even the cities like uh, it's uh, uh it's gonna be challenging for everyone uh, because uh you know you're gonna have more and more shoots on stage, but also on location, and everyone needs to work together. And at the moment, it's this is what we're doing in France, and it's work, it's working very really well. But do you have do you have the equivalent of like a French pine wood, or is there are there plans afoot for a French pine wood of that size and I, scale? Right, we cannot say that we have uh, lived in, in France or pine wood yet. Uh, that's the reality because uh, our culture was not the same. Um, but uh, that's why, uh, once again, um, uh, the, uh, the the government is investing a lot and um, and helping these industries to develop themselves. Um, but we have stages. You have uh, you know I've shot Emil in Paris uh, in Paris on, on stage uh, at the Cité du Cinéma. Uh, we shoot uh, Murder Mystery on stage as well. Part and as I said, more than sixty percent of the shoot in France will happen on stage. Uh, I've shot. Uh, you have stages in the south of France. You've got uh, so. And, and many other projects as well are developing. So I cannot say they are ready now, but uh, they will in a few years. And, um, and that's, a, that's a great opportunity. So I'm just I'm going back to you, Rachel, in terms of um, staffing, finding talent to, to, work on, to work on your projects. I mean, how easy is it for you to access that? Or do you have a track record of doing that already through your company in London? Well, well we definitely have a track record of doing that. We have very strong links with all the and all the French schools and we have, have had for some time um, but it, like I say there's a lot of uh, French talent that's gone out all around the the globe they're very seasoned they've been they're very experienced they they have you know all sorts of um, cultural influence they've been working in North America and um, Australia you know so that so, but some of that talent really wants to, you know, they're, they're a bit more mature. They might want to come, a lot of them want to come home, which is fantastic. Really bringing that talent home is wonderful. The schools, I can't say enough how brilliant the schools are out um, in France and, and the quality of the students that they, they um, produce. And these are students that aren't just sort of technically brilliant, but they are really well versed in, in cinema. They, you know, France values its arts enormously. And so in my little bit of, you know, again, talking as a visual effects company, you know, even those artists are, they're so, they have such a, they're taught so well, they're, they're taught to be artists, they're taught to understand cinema. You know, these are five year courses. So um, there's lots of homegrown talent, there's lots of global talent that wants to come back. So staffing the studio is not, hasn't been problematic. It's absolutely right what Raphael says, all over the world, there are bottlenecks in terms of producing enough um, talent, whether it's in production or in post-production, in order to feed the demand that we see at the moment. Um, and you know, in talking about stage space, well, there are there are well-established stages all over France. It's just a, you know, we expanded Leaves and we expanded Pinewood, we expanded else, you know, we it's just that the infrastructure is there because it has such a France has such a long history with cinema. It's just about expanding it, bringing more talent through, you know, but this it, it's actually something that France really, really knows how, how to do. So I, yes, of course there's a bit of delay, but um but uh yeah, we can we can definitely grow the industry. Um, without putting you on the spot, are there any particular schools you go to in France that are particularly interesting for you? 
the, oh, I'm probably going to name the, the, the two that everybody will say, which is Artifacts, the Down in Montpellier and Gobelin. Um, but there are others um, and, and we do take, we do take, we have links with all of them and we, we take students from as many as we can, yeah. I just have um, some questions are coming through now. So I just thought I'd ask one of those, maybe for, for Raphael. Um, hold on, let me see if I can find it again. So um, this is from uh, someone called Iris Cohen saying, with the increased mm -hmm. demand from international studios and streamers, as well as local French productions, are you noticing any decentralization from Paris? Are you expecting facilities and crew to grow outside of Paris? I mean, there were already yes. half, weren't there, so. Well, yes. Well. Of course, this after Paris, this huge hub in uh, in in Marseille and Nice, well, in the south of France, um, and of course, it's going to increase uh, elsewhere. Like uh, talking about studios now as well in the in the north of France, and of course in Montpellier, which is more like for uh, this. There are stages there with the technicians, of course, for which is more known for French TV. Um, but uh, I'm sure they, they can open themselves to international productions. So, of course, at the moment, uh, many of the technicians uh, are living in Paris or around Paris and in the south of France. They, they would, this would be the two big hubs, if we can say so. Uh, but um, it, it would increase. And, and once again, also, also it's like, uh, as I was mentioning, like if there's more and more shoots in France and in the cities, like, uh, um, it, it will have to happen. We have to be so because, like, you cannot shoot in Paris. Well, you can shoot in Paris, of course. I'm, I'm doing that now. But like, if there's if all the shoots happening in Paris, then of course, like, the city would be already uh, completely uh, full, and, and then it's going to be uh, uh, natural to also move outside Paris and, and and in France. And if you know France a bit, of course, it's a beautiful country. So there's not only one city in France. There's an entire country, and there's so many other regions to explore and to, and that can offer beautiful locations as well as uh, the uh, stages when it's gonna come and um, and technicians of course will move there. It's a, um, it's a kind of a natural thing. Because I mean, isn't there like a sort of a growing um, audio visual scene in, in Bordeaux as well? Is that feeding into yeah. the international well, I, I, Yeah, I, I do not know all of them, but I know that there's many areas and, and uh, uh, two years ago, I think it was before we spoke, uh, I've shot uh, Tom McCarthy, Stillwater. We shot entirely in Marseille with most of the technicians who were coming from Marseille. And, and I'm from Nice and I know that uh, I've shot and, I, and I'm still going there as soon as I have the opportunity. So um, uh, I've shot as well uh, in Bordeaux, but uh, not as much as I would have liked to, but it's like that, you know, it, so the project is bringing you somewhere. So it really come with the scripts and, and the creatives that would for sure come with some ideas at some point to make us move somewhere in France and and but um do you think yeah. the pandemic has 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 um, had an impact on that as well in terms of I mean maybe with VF you were talking about this Rachel about some yeah of yeah and I'm sorry for sure like we've worked more and more during the pandemic uh, to we've learned to work remotely it helps a lot I'm sure the post uh, production companies and actually during the pandemic I've produced a, a show for with Studio Canal. And Apple that we I, I produced completely remotely. I was in France and we were producing the show in Los Angeles, so it's completely doable. It's going to be complicated when it comes to physical shooting because you need to basically be where you have to 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 be. It's not that you can do that remotely, but uh, but I I think people has learned to 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 live in in other regions than and cities than Paris or just the big capitals in the world. So they, they like to and, and for that we will just travel. So. It, it helps because it, it has uh, it opened uh, us to to see how we can work in a different way and remotely, and I think it's going to have an impact as well on the stories that we want to tell. Um, and you were saying, Rachel, you were saying that some of your people you work with have moved out of Paris and are actually working. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that we've got. I mean, that's the thing. We're not constrained by the physical space anymore. So yeah, we have a, a studio in Paris, which is quite sizable. But yeah, we we have artists working from all over France. We have several in the south of France. How perfect. <laughs> now, and I just just had another question for you as well, Rachel. You because you obviously are dealing with a lot of the US studios um, in terms of for, for special effects. And you do you think that the studios, US studios understand what France has to offer? 
Um, I suspect there's quite a lot of educating that we could do around the trip, particularly. Um, they certainly will, they'll be very well aware of the French talent because it's everywhere. Um, but yeah, utilizing the trip, um, I think there's, we need to do some work around that for sure. Um, but the thing that's so fantastic about working in, in France with French talent is you, you're talking about people who are super experienced. So there's a lot of efficiency in terms of executing creative work, executing shots, because you've got a lot of senior artists. And so your engagement in, with the work is, is very strong. And, you know, it, you know, finding a path, a sort of creative um, path through something or solving a problem um, is, is actually quite efficient when you've got really seasoned artists. Um, so there's huge benefits creatively, but yes, definitely the um, educating them uh, in terms of the, the, the 40% and how straightforward it is actually to get past the cultural test and, and utilize that. Yeah. Okay. Some work to do there. But, and uh, for sure, like there's always more communication to make and education, as you said, but they already know, as you said, that uh, you know, like uh, all these big projects that we've mentioned, uh, Rachel and I are uh, like, like all these projects, either from uh, John Wick, which is a Lionsgate project, or uh, the ones with Netflix. They already know and they know how to use it. And since it's on, like have been, of course, uh, asked by many other studios. So it's important to ex explain them, and and but uh, it's. It's, they already know and, and they see the impact that it could have on any production, that's for sure. I suppose what I was make, the connection yeah. that I'm making is that you're, if you're introducing somebody to a new territory that they're not necessarily used to, particularly in visual effects, if, yeah. that is, um, if they understand the quality of the work that can be produced there, that's an easier thing to do, isn't it? It's like, you know, because people want to go somewhere where they feel that they're going to be looked after. So, um, you know, it's an... It's, it's the 40% plus a known quantity, if you see what yeah. I mean. Thank you, yes, that's for sure. So um, I have another question has been fielded over to me for Raphael. Um, oh. So speaking to another trade publication, Raphael has said that in the UK, US, when a film is greenlit to a certain budget, the goal is to see that budget on screen. <laughs> okay. Whereas French producers would try to cut costs in order to turn oh, no, that's Yeah, oh. no, that's something that I said, no, no, yeah. Hmm? Could he elaborate on this? Laurent Buffy. Ah, okay. Sorry, this was a question. Got, that was still I, Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I can't remember when I said that. Uh, now, I, I was referring to this, like someone was explaining me, uh, well, was asking me how or how did I get into the industry or something. And I, it was when I mentioned my uh, one of my first experiences as a line producer on the film, where basically um, I, I, I was working at the time, I was a junior production manager or something, and I was working at the time with a French line producer that was on a project, and it was a film for uh, for a US studio. And um, it, it's just that um, some of the French projects, when they when they are green lit or when they're trying to finance themselves, the, 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 the way uh, the financing are done, it's, it's not really the same, is uh, the, the fee for the producers or the uh, general expenses are not financed, and and sometimes the line producer, one of his, is always try to reduce those costs, uh, not well the, the cost, or try to save on the budget so that basically, if at the end you have ten million to do a film and then you say, oh, I only spend nine, then the producer can say, oh, then okay, I can I can I can pay myself. Uh, it's not really the way. I used to learn how to work because I was always working on US or UK productions where basically the pressure was green lead, the, the fee for the producer was green lead as well and everything. So basically my aim as a line producer was really to spend the money that I have on screen and to basically help the director to achieve his vision and to try to help him in that sense and not try to save money on uh, everything where to, because my job was not to say, Hey, I've done a good job. I came back with some savings. My, my job was to really spend that money on the screen so that, um, the studio at the end and the producers were happy because basically if they paid to have a film with, I don't know, like, let's say you want to have a thousand extras, then you want to see that these thousand extras and you don't want to say, Oh, I've only spent 800 and, yeah. and you have 200 extras that you didn't see. And then when you're watching the film, you say, Oh, that those streets seems empty or something and this kind of thing. So basically it's, it, it was very, uh, the approach and when I was 
mentioning that to complete the, the story is um, at the time I was just a junior production manager and the line producer had a different approach. And so basically he was always trying to save here and there without basically talking to the director. And, and because for him, his approach was to save some money. And me, I was always trying to, I was always debating, having arguments with him, say, but it's there, so we should spend it. And, and at the end, the US producer who was saying that, just say, oh, uh, then we have, it, it basically created my connections with these producers because they were happy of the, the vision that I had and not the, I would say right. the French vision. I don't want to say it's French and UK, US. It's just that it happened on that project and that it's because we had this different approach that they basically, they, they were happy to work with me more than this other person. But it might have changed in those years since as well. Well, it's, it might have changed in the fact that, uh, well, I've produced a French film and I know that when I've produced it, uh, my fee was not, it's just, I think it's an approach in life in general. It's just like, uh, and well, in this, when I have a budget, I want to make sure that I'm going to do the best of it with the money that I have. And so that you can really see it on screen and not uh, trying to either save some money so that I can say, oh, then I have a margin. This is not my approach. And I can understand that maybe others will do so because that's when, how they earn their life and this is what they want to do. But um, as you were mentioning, Rachel, because in France, we also have a, a sense of, uh, and I'm just saying the opposite of what I just said, because we are creative and we want to basically show that the, the art before the industry, mm -hmm. I would like to spend the money that I have to show the art more than just saying, oh, I'm going to make a business out of it and save some money so that I can have a margin. It's just, it's just a different thing. It's just it's subtle cultural differences around how, you know, the way that our um, film industries have grown up, haven't they? But I, I hear what Raphael's saying. I think that's... Have I have some, <laughs> sorry, I was I put you on the spot there. So I was, I was reading the second part of it. I'm sorry. Um, so um, I've got another question here, which I think should be easier. So do you think all these evolutions in the French industry with the international pro, uh, productions and the post productions and could lead to big French projects with international uh, impact like we have in the UK? We've had seen James Bond and Harry Potter be produced in the UK and they go around the globe. Do you think that could be something that could happen in France, either of you? Uh, well, it's already happening, isn't it, a little bit? I mean, I think without any dilution at all of, the, of, of France's sort of um, cinem cinematic history or whatever, we see um, uh, productions already with more commercial scope. And we see French language um, productions being very successful internationally and all around the world. So, yeah, I think that's I think they're absolutely on on their way to that. I mean, Raphael talked. Today. Yeah, well, I will, but well, then of course it's a question of. I would say also it's a question of market. If you compare, uh, like, if you're shooting a film in French dedicated to a French market, uh, then whatever you can think, you're not going to spend the money that you have on Harry Potter that is dedicated to an inter international audience. That said, like, if you're looking at an animation, for instance, uh, um, uh, recently, like uh, Sing Two and many other films that has been done by my girlfriend, Aviation are films that are really at the same scale and uh, as great as all the pixel productions that you can have coming from the States and they've done it, they are made and created in France. So that's, uh, and then um, may, may, maybe, uh, and that I would say thanks to the platforms, uh, the French productions would then also can have a, a, a better uh, audience, I'm not saying better, but larger audience in the world, because this is what I think one of the, great benefits from the platforms is that uh, even the local production could reach the world like you you see that i'm not done the name emily in paris because it was darren star who came to france to shoot but if you look at lupin for instance who was, uh, was a huge success on netflix i think uh no, not i think I, i've read it and uh, it, it is a french production mm. yeah, yeah lupin call my agent all of those which is so french there's no, you know, they didn't back, they haven't changed anything about those, but they've, but they've been massively successful. Yeah. But I'm also wondering if there would be scope for like um, an English language, um, a big English language, uh, prop, you know, proper, a French property with English language, which is, is made for the whole world, whether that could end up making its home in France over three or, you know, three decades, like the same way as Harry Potter, if that, would there be scope for that? It could be interesting. Mm. We'll see what happens. I don't see why not. 
And, and I'm just going down the, the chat line here as well. I have a few questions here. Um, I'm not sure whether everybody can, um, you can answer all of the, hold on. There was one about, um, yeah, so for, for you, Rachel. So in terms of one of us now, do you take on, now that you have a, you have a UK, uh, French office, are you, do, you, do you become a producer? Um, do you actually, are you the person that people can access the trip through? Yes, we, they can, uh, yes, absolutely. We have a, a service company that they can access the trip through. Yeah, we can help with that. But there are, there are lots, but yes, we have one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then I had and a in the case, just, I'm oh, sorry. You can't carry on. And I was saying in the case of John Wick, it's slightly different because, because I was the production service with the physical production, then I'm, uh, I'm the one who contracted for the studio uh, with one of us. So it is really <laughs> different. No, 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 it's fine. It's no problem at all. But, but uh, that said as well, like you don't have to physically shoot in France to access the, 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 the trip with VFX and you could go directly through the, uh, uh, through the uh, post-production company if they want to, it's fine. Like any basically legal entity in France could access the, the rebate. It's, you don't have to go through either a production service company, but you could go directly with your VFX company. Yeah. Uh, and there was... Sorry, Karen. No, I was just going to say, but we do have a production services company, but but yeah. yes. And then um, there was another question that came through about, but I think this might be a bit specialised and you may not go, uh, um, half of my team are talented BAFTA Brits. Do they need visa now to work in post-Brexit Paris? Well, it's not post-Brexit Paris, but Paris post-Brexit. <laughs> But you might not be, it might be a bit specific. I'm not Wait, sure. Sorry, say the question. I didn't quite catch the question. So it was half my team are talented BAFTA Brits. Do mm. they need a visa now to work in Paris after Brexit? But that might be a bit specialised. I'm you shoot it. I mean, if you're, shoot, if you're a UK resident paying UK tax and you want to shoot, you want to shoot in, in France, then you will either have to go on your Schengen days or you'll have to get a visa. Um, yeah. If that's, I mean, Raphael, again, Raphael, will answer that question better than I will. Yeah, no, but it, 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 well, that's technically the answer. You can come and, and stay in France for more than 90 days if, if you're not part of it. And, and then of course you can have visas in France. It's pretty uh, accessible. And I, I'm doing that on almost every show now because with the series, of course, uh, the length of the stays in France are longer and longer. And um, like, for instance, the uh, Darren Star, when he's coming, he has a what we call a passport talent. Uh, it's, it's the equivalent of the old one that you would have in the US, and and, and so that uh, you can come and stay and live in France and work in France. So it would be the same for all these uh, great talents from England if they want to stay more than ninety days. Okay, okay. Um, and I've got a question. I think would work be what for you, Rachel. And I think it's from somebody who's French because it's Agathe Loison Balak. Um, what would you say are the limitations of France regarding production of VFX compared to other countries such as the UK? And what could be changed, could done to change that? I mean, we're talking about France very positively, which deserves to be. But is there anything? Are there any any things that you think would be benefit from being changed? Well, I mean, if we're talking limitations right now, current yes. limitations, then I think there is, you know, I mean, you know, of course, uh, scaling up, you know, if we want to take on enormous um, visual effects shows, then then there does need to be some scaling up of, of you know, there's plenty, there's, there's a lot of great visual effects studios in Paris already. We are by no means the first. Um, but, uh, and we can either all work collaboratively or we can, you know, all those studios have to grow. Um, so uh, I think in, in terms of, uh, of creativity or, or, or technical expertise, there, again, it's really a scale issue. I don't think there's anything holding, you know, that, as I keep saying, it's, it's some of the best talent in the world. So it's not like we don't have the skills um, but if we want to, it depends on the scale of the, of, of the project that you want to do, really. Um, the, it's probably worth mentioning that there's quite a lot of investment in, um, like, so, so there's quite a big, uh, or there is a big um, LED volume stage being built just outside of, of Paris, um, which obviously taps into all of that new technology. It's, we get asked that question all the time. Um, so if you're looking at virtual production, um, which is something that um, we see that well, the UK does very, very well, as does you know, 
other uh, as do other parts of the world. I think there is infrastructure that still needs to be put in place in order to do big scale virtual production, definitely. Um, but that's already on its way in, in France. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And I have a question. Um, this is from somebody called David Kelly. Um, and he's asking, do the new tax rebates in France, um, I mean, not the trip and this push into international, would it have um, a positive or negative impact for the, the, the truly local French independent film business, which isn't necessarily the, the point of this talk, but it is an interesting point. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, well, you, you can see, but there's two ways to answer this. It will have, and it has a, a positive impact as it might have as a negative impact as well uh, on, I would say, smaller productions or independent productions. I think it was the same in the UK, same in Italy or in other countries. Like the more big productions that you have and the more demand has an impact, like uh, the rates are in the UK, for instance, for many technicians are, has raised over the last two years for 20% or so more it's going to be the same for sure at some point in France, like industries or uh, we are raised their rates and everything. It's part of the demand and, you know, it's kind of the, what you have it's the market issue. And um, so unfortunately, it, if you want to be really honest on that, it could have in, uh, some negative impact on the local uh, independent productions it, because uh, it will increase the the cost. So on that aspect, it could be a problem. If you see it on another aspect, also you have as well many more networks, many more demands. So you can also increase the like maybe it will it will be also like these other approaches that were not able to be made because the market was too small. Then now thanks to those networks and this increase in terms of the market, then you'll be able to sell your productions to many other territories and, and countries. So then it could also be a, a positive aspect as well. You know, it's one or the other and both, I think. It's just that you have to deal with it. And even on our side, uh, like I know at the moment I'm suffering because of the lack of technicians at some point, but not only in France, like it's everywhere in Europe. And, and when you contact a line producer or any other technicians, their rates are higher. So it's not, it's always an impact. I don't know if it's, good or not but it's like that well we focused a lot on the the, um, the crossover between the uk and france um and the states and are you bringing in people from from other european territories as well to fill in these gaps is it becoming a sort of a is that a hub for people to come and work in or not yet uh, i always try to, to hire french technicians as much as i can because uh and, and, and not because I don't want to work with others. It's just like I, I've shot films and produced films in Germany and in other countries. And, and when I go there, I like to work with locals. Uh, I think it's part of uh, what we should all do. And, but um, when you do not find them, then, then you have to try to find them where you can. And at the moment, uh, uh, sometimes you, you have to, uh, for the moment, on the projects that I'm working on, it's fine. Like uh, all the technicians that I need, I find them in France and it's great. But uh, I know that for other productions that I'm also supervising for uh, a French studio uh, and that we are not shooting in France, I'm hiring people from all over Europe and and that's what I, that's what we are. Yeah. So, and uh, on this film as well, I'm working with uh, people coming from England, people coming from uh, uh, the US and other countries. So, so it's all a, a small world and you find the talents where they are and so the abilities. So I think we're coming towards the end of our time, but um, just like to wrap up a bit. I mean, we've talked about this sea change and this scaling up that's taking place in, in France. And it is quite amazing, actually, this, this push for the country to become more international in, in terms of its film and TV business. Um, so what do you, I mean, without, you, can't, you haven't got a crystal ball, but what do you think the situation will be in five years time? Do you think we'll, there will be some major studios in the country? What do you, what, how do you see it when you're looking for it? I know we've had a pandemic and it's very hard to predict, but what do you see? What's your, what are you envisaging for the future? But I mean, Raphael and then, then and Rachel in terms of your business as well. Rachel, sure you want to start? Or you Rachel, want to start? you can start. Yeah, <laughs> um, in five years' time, I don't know. Yes, I, I think. Um, uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, 
I think it will continue. It will continue to to scale up. I think we will see more and more um, exciting productions, either French productions or productions international productions coming to France for different reasons. I think there's um, so much investment. There's so much will. There's so much energy around the new technologies, the um, uh, reinvigorating uh, uh, infrastructure that's already there and expanding on that. The talent um, has, like I say, has been around for a really long time. Whether that's um, production, post-production, whatever, because because of, because of its its sort of long history um, with cinema, it's building on that talent. I think the sensibilities, the creative creativity, all of that is actually um, it's a uh, it's a flavour that people really like, and we're seeing we're seeing that internationally. So yes, one would hope that there will be a a, a good, strong, steady um, scaling up of uh, of um, film and TV production in France. I couldn't possibly put a number on where we'll be in five years' time. Raphael, yeah. what's your sense? Uh, with all the projects that I know, and, and I know that I'm, I do not know all of them, so <laughs> it, it all goes on like that. Uh, for sure, we will have uh, great stages. Uh, uh, I hope that, uh, well, I hope, I cannot say I, I, I know because I'm not part of this project so uh, I don't want to be responsible for that but I, and I know it's not a lie and not just a dream there's been great stages happening and uh, in five years time I, say, I hope uh, that I will have produced or producing a, a film like you were saying Harry Potter like I have an IP that is great I didn't want to talk about it because that's not the subject of our conversations today but I have a great IP that is a French IP that uh, is as good I would say as, uh, as many other IP that have been done all over the world and and, uh, and I hope that uh, in a few years time, I'll be shooting on stage or even, uh, you know, one of them and many other films as well, like in small indie movies and, and series. And I, I do not see uh, it stop because people will need more and more content. And, and uh, it's important, you know, uh, uh, for me, uh, I like to tell stories. You know, we're always talking about industry and money and this and that and rebates. I think it's important that we can tell story to people. And I think uh, we have to, make them and, and so especially now because sometimes the news are not so great so i like to tell my story and the, the, the thank you that's like a nice positive note to to finish the talk on and it is a very exciting time in france um yes. film and tv and we've been through real uncertainty and i know it's been tough for the local industry but um there is a sense that the business kept on turning the production just kept on turning at least and um Let's hope as we come out of the pandemic, this is going to, to, to continue and get better. So um, thank you for joining us on this um, Screen Daily Talk and thanks to uh, Film France and CNC for sponsoring it. Um, I hope you've learned a bit um, from today, but obviously you can always like um, email the Film France um, for, for if you have further questions about the details of visas and the trip and all these sorts of things. Um, I'm sure they can always help you um, with more detailed questions. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Raphael, and thank you, um, Rachel, and good luck with your new endeavor in, 